1927 underwear book and this time because it's so cold outside with some underdresses. There are some in this book and they all have the same basic pattern as you can see if you compare them left and right. They just have different trimmings and uh, it says here that you can finish them with some bias binding and they have a little detail a little bit graphic down here in which you gather one side. This is the pattern number 93 and 94. Well let me see if I can find it. 93 wonderful here double line and now we follow the double line, we follow the double line, wait uh, there's a corner, we follow it down, we follow it down, we follow it, oh, it finishes, uh, and you have to make it longer. Well, that's what I did, and uh, this is what it looks like, it's very straight, very simple, and uh, I have chosen some um, see-through paper to look at the pattern itself. You see here that uh, it crosses over and you have to separate the two and make other exemplaries of this pattern. Well, so I can be done with this one. The original pattern has uh, interesting cuts on the side. And uh, as you can see here, they don't quite add up at the waist. I'm not quite sure why, but they say um, if you want to change the height of the waist or if you want to change the width of uh, the sides, you can absolutely do that. And uh, yeah, so I've taken a bit more of my cotton and uh, to give it some pizzazz and some more width and this is how I tried to cope with this interesting cut and the seam allowances which are growing narrower by the centimeters <laughs> and then there is the problem of the bust width which is a little bit too much for me and uh, in cutting and testing I had to reduce this um, to again and on the bottom it flares out a little bit which is uh, kind of distinctive for the pattern and this is what I came up with um, I did not have much footage of the making up and uh, I'm very surprised because the skirt is very wide. The hem is a normal double hem. You can absolutely do this by machine and you'd still be historically accurate if you'd like to. And going up, this is uh, the yeah waste disaster. Um, it got caught in the machine two times on both sides and uh, yeah I'm not quite satisfied with this and might cover this with embroidery later. On the upper side a narrow hem also by machine. Oh, it'd be gone. Um, and this is the dress. But is this still 1920s? I mean the silhouette we are used to, those long, long lines, no waist definition at all, Charleston dresses, like this slender, boyish figure, isn't that what defines the 20s? The one hour dress that is so current in all of those 20s things that you are sewing, a very similar structure but there were different figures around too. Take Jeanne Lanvin, one of the most important couturiers in Paris. She styled the robe du style 
with very wide hips and she was immensely popular at the beginning of the 20s for her ball gowns. All this is still 1920 and uh, this style got picked up by other couturiers, by Paul Poiret, by the Caillot Sœur. It was popular as a wedding dress or a party dress and uh, sometimes demanded an understructure that you should wear underneath to remain the silhouette. There also was the Basque dress that you can find in the construction and patterning books from that time. And so I think this is one of these kind of half Basque dress. I can confirm that it keeps you warm just below the knee where it ends and is very useful for winter dresses with some width. And as it is very cold outside, as you can see here, it is going to be useful for winter. Thanks for watching.